Thank you so much for having me. Oh, of course. And I know you strongly believe in vaccines. Tell us why, because there's so many people are saying there's doctors and, and PhDs that are saying it's horrible. Why do you strongly believe that it's so efficacious and useful and, and important to give to our kids? And I absolutely believe that. I would say absolutely with 10 exclamation marks after it. Um, vaccines save lives. That's really the bottom line. The one thing that they were designed to do, they do. They save lives, they're safe, and they work. They were designed to save lives. And really, second only to clean water, they have made the biggest difference in the medical world at decreasing disease and saving lives worldwide. The World Health Organization, they say that vaccines save about two to three million lives a year. And then it's not even just the lives saved, but it's even the aftermath. Let's say you get a disease. Uh, it's all that aftermath. If you survive that disease, it's the medical costs, it's the personal costs, it's the child health care, all the transportation after. Um, it is estimated that vaccines have saved about $300 billion in all of that wow. aftermath for the survivors of the diseases that the vaccines were designed to protect. And, and I believe what you're saying, and, I, and I'm fully uh, supportive of it. So why is there this big deal being made everywhere about the fact that folks are even watching they can't quite decide sometimes whether to vaccinate their kids it's not i want to tell you though and, and you agree with this for those who are watching it's not the majority you know there's sometimes it seems like everybody's against this but it's not but there's a significant number of people who say what you know what i i'm worried about my kids why is there a debate you know we you, it saves lives and we say it's safe and why is there such a debate and why are people worried about this well i think the debate started because we live in a different world now than when the vaccines were first originated. Back then, what did people fear? People did fear disease and death. And now we live in a world that actually is healthier. And it's in a way, vaccines are a victim of their own success. Right. They have been so good. I mean, even in the U.S., there's been a 95% decline in the diseases that are vaccine preventable diseases. And so, you know, if you lived decades ago and you would see your neighbor die and you would see the child across the street die what is the number one thing on your mind i have to protect this these diseases are real these diseases are what i fear when i put my children to bed at night now that you don't see them that fear gets a little bit eliminated and you get one or two false pieces of information out there and that's what resonates to you you hear a false information about a side effect then as a parent you are responsible for every decision, for every single thing for your child, and you take that responsibility seriously. You get one piece of information that gives you fear, you fear that, and not the disease that you don't see anymore. And hence, here we have a controversy now. And you think to yourself, you know, it's my kids, and you have kids, I have kids. We never want to harm our kids. And I think mm -hmm. you're right. When people put out the information that, by the way, here's a disease I have never seen, mm -hmm. and this is to protect my kids from a disease I've never seen, mm -hmm. and now it could potentially cause a problem. So, of course, you say, well, I'm just going to stay away from that. Mm -hmm. That's a very good explanation, which leads me to say, why haven't we seen this disease? And what's the concept of the herd immunity? Because people always who are, who are against it say, well, this disease doesn't exist or mm -hmm. is overblown. What's the herd immunity and what does that have to do with this? And, and that is such a good question because herd immunity is the key to vaccines working. What herd immunity means is enough of us need to be vaccinated to protect us all. And right now you're looking at about 90 to 95% of the population need to be vaccinated so everyone is protected. And a lot of people will say, okay, that's not a big deal, 90 to 95%, isn't that happening? Well, what we have to remember is not everyone can even get vaccines. Correct. In a way, being healthy enough and old enough to be able to get a vaccine is kind of a medical privilege. You are lucky if you are healthy enough that you can get a vaccine. So now with each vaccine, again, we're human beings, we're not robots, so there's always a little bit of variability. Not every single body will mount the perfect protection to every vaccine. Maybe one day, and that is why research continues. That's the beauty of vaccines. In the world of science, we never stop looking for answers. Right. But now not everyone will respond. So you're gonna have a small percentage that won't mount that full response.
Then you have the group of people that are not old enough to receive certain vaccines. Correct. So what about them? Then you have a group of people who might be immunocompromised, which means their immune system is not strong, strong enough, enough yeah. whether it's chemotherapy, whether it's another autoimmune disease. So this is another group of people that would be protected if the healthy, strong people could get their vaccines. So it actually is hard to attain that 90 to 95% of uh, numbers that we need vaccinated. And, and this year it's come to a head. We have to take a break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.